previously on Hack. Divorced, huh? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I was a nun. Seriously. I find there's a little good in everyone. While you're at it, do the dishes. Kids trouble, Mike. When are you gonna dump him? He needs a father figure. What, his own father won't do? His own father won't talk to him. Where the hell did these come from? Oh, it's a guy, you know, it's happenstance. I'm selling them online. You conning amputees now? Dumb son of a bitch! Detective Washington, don't! Sit down. This is the mess that you got him into. I'd bust your ass. I know. All right, I feel really bad. What is it, Marcellus? I might be sick. How sick? It may be cancer. I'm going for a biopsy next week. What can I say? Brian Lowe murdered my wife in cold blood, and I'm disgusted with the judge's ruling. Would you like to comment on the fact that your mishandling of the evidence was responsible for the decision to dismiss the charges? Lowe got off on a bogus technicality. He did it. This isn't over. We're going to get him. Judge Newmeyer claims his hands were tied. He had to find the DNA evidence inadmissible because the laws on evidentiary procedure are very clear. This hearing was a travesty. My sister's killer got away with murder. It's a circus out front. We're coming out the side exit on 13th Street. Where are you, Mike? Yeah, I see you. All right, they're heading your way. Give me a call tomorrow, Brian. Thank God that's over. Where to? Uh, Preston and Haverford. Can't wait to give Josh a big hug. <laughs> What's wrong, Rena? We're not gonna pick up where we left off. What? And my parents don't want you living with us. I'm sorry. Scroll. We'll find our own place. What's going on? You think I actually murdered someone? I don't know. I just need some time. So you came to the pretrial hearings every day. As your lawyer told me it would look bad if I didn't. I don't believe this. It's in your father, isn't it? He's poisoned you. No, and so it I... is me. I told you. I just need some time to think everything out. Hold on. You can't come in. I want to see Josh. Not today. Listen, you can't just cut me out of his life. Let me give you a lift somewhere. I haven't got any money. Come on. I got a neighbor. She might be able to help you find a place to stay. Excuses, Travis. I don't care if you're struck by lightning. You be in my office. 215. Be there. Hey. Hi. 
Can we talk? You didn't tell me who needed a place to stay. Good night. Isn't that the guy whose case was just thrown out? The murder in Chestnut Hill? Aren't you the woman who sees a little good in everyone? I got a feeling about him. Oh, come on. You just said the factor. Excuse me? You know, that instinct. The way you can tell who's been naughty and who's been nice. I'm a probation officer. I've placed a lot of people in this halfway house. We've got strict rules. One strike and you're out of here. You got that? You're responsible for keeping your room clean. Yes, ma'am. So the judge dismissed your case? Yeah. Why? Oh, come on, Liz. He's been through a lot today. I'm going to stick my neck up for someone. I want to know who I'm helping. You didn't kill that woman? No, she was my friend. So I worked for the landscape gardening company that serviced Bonnie Lincoln's home. She was friendlier than most of the people in that part of town. We used to talk. I really liked her. The DA seemed to have enough evidence to indict you. Well, I was in the house that day. Bonnie asked me to help her move some bedroom furniture. She cut her hand. She was dripping blood everywhere. I cleaned it up with a rag I had. The police found that in my truck. What else did they have? <sighs> I've got a juvie record for assault. You get the picture? Gardner with a record. An attractive, rich housewife. Idiot detectives didn't look anywhere else. Who were the cops? What difference does it make? I used to be a cop. Detectives Madrid and Denison? Hmm. Thanks. Yeah, sure. I was promised my old job back. I'll be able to pay for the room. How you doing? I'm doing. Anything new from the doctors? CAT scan got sent to a thoracic surgeon. I got an appointment this afternoon. It's probably nothing. Why do people always say that? It's probably nothing. Hell, I've even said that to guys I knew were dying. You got busted. Maybe this is my punishment. That would be cruel and unusual. Call if you need me. Osansky. Yeah, somebody call a cab. Came by to give my condolences. Tough break this morning. Yeah, some pimple-faced court clerk screws up a warrant. We take a hit. Judge threw out solid evidence on a freaking technicality. No other suspects? No. No, of course. You would have looked. We had the right guy, Olshansky. Hey, Brian. Hey, Shane. Just heard the good news. Well, you look busy. Yeah. I'm not complaining. You know, it was a little slow a couple months ago, but things have really picked up. You know I feel bad about not visiting you. Don't worry about it. Um, I need to get back to work as soon as possible. I know I promised, Brian, but... Well, you know how my clients are. I think we got to give it some time. How much more time? It's not me, you know that. But I gotta be honest with you. I lost a few accounts after you were arrested. I need to feel things out, you know, and see if people will accept you back. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying, give me some time to gauge things, so.
trouble. Well, you said you used to be a cop. And Liz told me you still help people who are in trouble. Yeah. That's a habit I should try to break. You see the looks on the street. The charges were dropped. No one believes I'm innocent. I can't even get my old job back. Well, what do you want from me? Like you said, I'm not a cop anymore. That's the point. I mean, the cops aren't looking for anyone else. You're right about that. I ran into Detective Madrid. See, I might as well have been tried and convicted. Nothing's going to change unless the real murderer is found. I want my life, my son back. You know I'd still be here. You work late every night, Patina. You really need to get a life. I'm busy. What do you want? Can I ask you a couple questions about Brian Lowe? No. You've heard of attorney-client privilege. Yeah, maybe you waived that when you called me this morning to pick him up. I'm here because Brian asked me to help him find a real killer. Oh, let's get something straight, Mike. He's a free man today because he had a good lawyer. You would think he's guilty, too? I don't know. Sometimes it's better not to ask. My job was to give him the best defense. What'd they have against him? Cops found his fingerprints in Bonnie Lincoln's bedroom, a place most gardeners don't go, and her blood on a rag in his truck. What else? A witness placed Brian in the house around the time of the crime. I got the warrant to search the truck thrown out, fruit from the poison tree. Anything found in the truck was inadmissible. The bloody rag was the glue that held the whole case together. All the rest was circumstantial. What? You don't find it weird that a guy who got off scot-free from a capital crime won't leave well enough alone? I don't analyze them, Mike. I just defend them. Brian should just get on with his life. He hasn't got a life, Bettina. We have plenty of time, and I bet you're going to win a blue ribbon for this. Hang on. I got to take this call. You're going without me. Go ahead. Dr. Halpern? Yeah, so what do we know? Yeah, well, I do want you to tell me over the phone. You sure? Good morning, welcome to the hotel. Will you guys be needing the car soon? Do you want me to leave it out front for you? Well, I don't have to be back till after lunch. Thank you, guys. Good enough? Did I deliver? Yeah, you sure did. The owner know you took it? He handed me the keys personally. Scout's on her. What? 
One minute you tell me that uh, you need me to clean up my act, and the next you say you need a favor, you got a real bad case of situational ethics. Yeah, maybe I better work on that. On the other hand, I do take no for an answer. Oh, okay. I see. This was a test, and I failed, so I'll get the car right back. Oh, I guess Ethics 101's over for today, and you still haven't told me why you need the car. No, I didn't, did I? Well, if you're trying to impress someone, you might want to rethink this tie, because that style went out in the Carter administration. I need it by noon. Do my best. Can't guarantee. Mike. Yeah. Christopher Clark. You have any trouble finding him? No. Directions are great. Come on, I'll give you the tour. Good morning, Chris. Hello, Jennifer. It's a great house. Yeah, thanks. It's a great neighborhood, too. As you can see, everybody's real friendly. So, where are you from, Mike? I uh, just transferred up from Dallas. But, ooh, I gotta tell you, <laughs> I still got sticker shock from your prices up here. Yeah, it's a real hot market. Come on, let me uh, show you around. It's got uh, four bedrooms, five and a half baths, but the highlight is the kitchen. It was completely remodeled last year. State-of-the-art gourmet appliances. I'm sorry, I have to take this. I have a house closing this afternoon. Sure. Hey, Bob, we all set? That's a lot of crap. The inspection was two weeks ago. What? You're kidding. Oh, come on. Isn't it a little late for that to come up? Show you the kitchen. Yeah, this is the um, the house where that murder took place. I assure you, uh, if it got to a point where I thought you were serious enough to make an offer, I would, of course, have been obliged to disclose that fact. The house been on the market long? No, it was just listed last week. Ooh. And the murder was um, how long ago? A year. Uh, the owner moved out right after his wife's death, but only recently decided to sell. Mm. Fresh paint and the. Uh, Floors are refinished in here. There must be a lot of blood. Are you a serious buyer? Mm -hmm. Or are you uh, one of these sickos with a macabre interest in murder scenes? Bonnie Lincoln was my sister. I don't appreciate you finding entertainment in her murder. Sorry. I'm just curious. Yeah, well, it doesn't feel that way to me. I think we're finished here. Hi, Rena. Brian, what are you doing here? It's gotten so big. Hey, Joshua. Please don't do this. Do, do what? Want to, want to see my son? But you didn't bring him once to visit? He doesn't even recognize me, for God's sake. Wait for me. Come on, grab a seat. I always knew there was a chance I would die young in this job. But from a bullet to the chest, not from spots on my lungs. What did the doc say? A thoracic surgeon reviewed the CAT scan, consulted with his colleagues. They all agree. Looks like lymphoma. But they're not sure. <laughs> you, you, you're going to put a happy face on this right up to the moment I kick, right? 
A week ago, I went in for a routine physical. This morning, it's like, it's like I got a day to live. next? I'm going to the hospital. Tomorrow morning for surgery. They're going to do a, um... They're going to do a uh, bronchoscopy and a thoracotomy with subsegmental resection of the right upper lobe. They're going to open up my lungs, get tissue for biopsy. How's Deborah handling it? Deborah don't know. Oh, Marcella, come I on. Start. Don't start with me. There are bad days, and then there are good days. Madrid, we're talking here. Yeah, we'll talk about this, Olshansky. New evidence turned up. Brian Lowe's going down. A perp just got busted for selling illegal weapons and wants to deal. He's got info to trade. He sold the gun that killed Bonnie Lincoln to Brian Lowe. Yeah, I couldn't when I was. Now I can. Madrid, Madrid said you cut a deal for yourself. And that's how you get out of bail. What are you talking about? High and low. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't owe him yeah. a thing. You, you sell him that gun, or you make it up. So you get the charges reduced. I swear on my mother's eyes, Olshansky. The kid bought the piece a week before he popped the broad. Come on, check it out. The cops know I'm not lying. It was an oldie but goodie. A Colt 38 Super. Not many around. Why the hell are you running from me? Because you were chasing me. Yeah, I'll hold. Don't give me that look, Travis. You knew what would happen if you missed your appointment. How's the job hunting going? Not good. Yeah, I'm still here. Here, call this number, ask for Rudy. Mention my name. He's always looking for dishwashers and busboys. Pays minimum wage, but he doesn't ask any questions. Thanks. You know, I really appreciate you giving me a chance. Hey, I'm in the second chance business. Get off that phone. I'm on hold. Tell me about Lou Casey. Huh? The gun that you bought from him. The 38 Super that killed Bonnie Lincoln. You. You killed her. No. I swear to God, no. I, but I didn't buy the gun. No. What does that mean? Well, I didn't buy it for myself. I bought it for Bonnie. Why did she want a hey. gun? I don't like being lied to. And I can't help you anymore. Your ass is back in jail as soon as Casey's testimony is presented to the grand jury. No, wait. Now, you don't understand. Bonnie said oh, she was afraid. Come on, Mike. Let's hear what he has to say. Hey, you got me involved in this. I'm just following my Santa instincts. I'm listening. Bonnie approached me one day, said she wanted a gun for protection, asked if I had a source. Now, why would she come to you? I once told her about my doing jail time. And you were stupid enough to help her. I didn't want to do it. I said no, but she offered me a lot of money. Rena had just had the baby, I had all kinds of hospital bills. I decided to risk it. You tell your lawyer about the gun? No, I figured it'd be more incriminating. 
And besides, Bettina was sure I'd get off because of the inadmissible evidence. Did Barney say who she was afraid of? No. I was suspected it was her husband. I mean, we talked a lot. I told you that. She was not happily married. They fought all the time. Mike, it's possible. You want me to look into this? OK, I'm going to. And I'm going to get to the truth. But if I find out that you are playing me, you are going to regret ever getting in my cab. We always knew we had the right guy. It was a matter of time. The uh, slug that killed the victim came from a very rare weapon. We never released that information. So when this fence tells us he sold the same model gun to Lowe, we knew we were back in business. I just spoke to the district attorney, and he told me he was going to bring the latest evidence to the grand jury and seek a new indictment. If this means that Brian Lowe is finally going to stand trial for the murder of my wife, I'm thrilled. I, I really don't want to comment any further. Sorry, ma'am. Why was your wife afraid of you? Excuse me? She thought she needed a gun for protection. What? Maybe you've got a place where we can talk in private. You have one minute before I call security. It won't take that long. The source told me that Brian Lowe bought the murder weapon for Bonnie. Because she was afraid of you. Your source is mistaken. Are you a cop? Not exactly. Then I don't understand. Roberta, I need security in the conference room right away. We're just talking here. Eric, is this guy giving you trouble? He showed up at the house this morning pretending to be a buyer. Who the hell are you? I'm just a guy looking for the truth. I'll just leave him, boys. Make an offer on the house? Wish I could afford it. What happened? Did the market crash? Well, the ups and downs of the Dow Jones don't have much effect on my life. Now, I'm an ex-cop, and I'm trying to help Brian Lowe. You've got some nerve coming here. I'm not interested in helping him. Uh, what if he is innocent? <laughs> Maybe you haven't heard. The police just found out Brian bought the gun to kill Bonnie. And he admits he bought it. He says that Bonnie asked him to do it. Brian thinks that Bonnie was afraid of her husband. So what if it turns out Brian didn't kill Bonnie? And you stonewalled me. How are you going to feel then? Bonnie loved her husband. What about her brother? Christopher? Yeah, I guess. I don't know if she was crazy about him living in the guest house. Christopher seemed to get along with her husband. Yeah, they really hit it off. Chris is a good guy. He went to work for Eric and became his top salesman. Well, Bonnie must have liked that. Yeah, well. Yeah, well, what? I think I've said enough. You want me to get Bonnie Lincoln's fingerprints from the car owner? Yeah, I'm playing a hunch. <laughs> get Marcellus to do it for you. 
He's, um, he's busy with right, What am I missing here? Bonnie Lincoln was the victim. Well, maybe she wasn't who she said she was. If Brian's right, Bonnie wanted a gun for protection. Why didn't she go to a licensed dealer and buy one? You're guessing she didn't want to have a background check. You got it. stuck at the office. I got three house closings this week. And you need a drink. Yeah, I do. How was your day? Mm, nothing special. Jogged. Did a little shopping at Rittenhouse Square. I had this strange encounter. No, with who? That guy you showed Bonnie's house to this morning. Eric and I had to kick him out of the office today. What did he want? Nothing, really. Exactly what did you tell him? What are you getting so upset about? If he can prove somebody else killed Bonnie, what's wrong with that? Yeah. The Philly PD blew it. They never should have let you go. You're a damn good cop. What'd you find out? Bonnie Lincoln had a record. Her real name was Jody Hawthorne. She also had an accomplice, her boyfriend, John Parker. They were con artists, pulled scams out of Ohio and Illinois. He nearly beat one of their marks to death. Bonnie got two years and the boyfriend eight. Well, where is he now? Parker, I'm trying to track him down. Thanks. You're welcome. Call me as soon as you find him. Sorry, off duty. Why don't you go back to work? I'll call you if I hear anything. It's been a slow day. I really appreciate you being here. But... Mrs. Washington, I have some good news for you. Your husband's out of surgery, and the biopsy revealed that the spots are not lymphoma, but rather sarcoidosis, a viral condition that mimics cancer on x-rays and CAT scans. So where does it go from here? Does it require treatment? In most cases, no. I've never heard of it. What did you call it again? Sarcoidosis. It's not very common, but there's a higher frequency of cases found in African Americans. Oh. Uh, can I hug you? <laughs> you certainly may. Oh. We're going to keep him in the hospital overnight for observation, and then we'll release him in the morning. Thank you. That's great. made it here fast. This was facts from the FBI. Everything they have on Bonnie's old boyfriend, John Parker. After he was released from Joliet two years ago, Parker jumped parole, and his whereabouts are unknown. Ooh, nice laundry list. Guy's a real operator. And violent, too. Go to page three. There's a photo. Now, am I crazy or cleaned up with shorter hair? Isn't Parker Christopher Clark? So while he's sitting in prison, Bonnie moves to Philly. 
cleans up her act, changes her name, marries a rich real estate developer, everything's going well, until he gets out, tracks her down. He, uh, he threatens to expose her. She doesn't go along with a scam. He becomes Bonnie's brother, goes to work with her husband. It's a great gig. Until Bonnie has an attack of conscience for Parker, he gets greedy. Brian guessed she needed the gun to protect herself from her husband, but actually she was afraid of her violent ex-boyfriend. I'll fill in Madrid and Dennison. Oh, this is gonna embarrass them, Athena. They're not gonna move quickly on this. I can go around them, pick them up on the parole violation. I'm gonna spook Parker yesterday. He could be on the run already. Yeah? He was waiting out front. Thought we were gonna jog. Yeah, well, something came up. I gotta go to Chicago for a couple days. You said you had three houses closing this afternoon. What's wrong? Nothing. Does Eric know that you're leaving? What is going on? Last night you were really- Back weird. off, Jennifer! Going somewhere? Parker? Parker? Well, that's his real name. John Parker. Yeah. No, Bonnie wasn't his sister. Why'd you kill her? Bonnie finally have enough? Was she gonna confess everything to Eric and blow your sweet deal? Move that cab. Uh -uh. You killed Bonnie. It was an accident. That bitch tried to scare me off with a gun. I tried to take it away from her. Self-defense? I might play with the jury, but I wouldn't count on it. Okay. Okay. What? All right? Just don't be stupid, all right? All right, all right, all right. Get mad. I just keep her mouth shut. First time in my life, I'm making honest money. Nobody's getting hurt. It's nice. But the irony, that doesn't play with me, pal. news. Great. Mm. Tell Ash. Mm. He's still at school. I'll bring him by this afternoon. Okay. So I may be high, but I know that look. What's going on? Why did you wait so long to tell me? Is our communication that bad that you couldn't tell me something as serious as this? I mean, I mean, you thought you were dying, for God's sake. Well, I was trying to protect you. I didn't know it. Oh, but just... you could tell Mike? Mike and I were on the street together. You, That's it, cop stuff. This is our lives. <laughs> Come on, babe. You got to cut me some slack. OK. 
We can't go on like this. We're going to talk. Sure. We are going to talk. Yes. Yes. Hey, Mike. How'd you find me? Liz told me you were down here checking out a job. Yeah. I got some great news. Police just booked John Parker for the murder of Bonnie Lincoln. <sighs> Who's John Parker? Hop in. I'll explain. Come on. Give you a ride to Rena's. You can break the news. You know, I... I really want to see Joshua. But I... I mean, I don't know. Oh, come on. She can't stop you from being with him now. Damage is always done when people are falsely accused. It's gonna take a while for Brian to get his life back together. Thank you. We tried to find Brian Lowe and Michael Oshansky, the ex-cop cab driver who actually broke the case, but neither wanted to be interviewed. We'll continue to follow this story for you. This is Denise Saunders reporting for CBS. Ah, the Lone Ranger. I'm covering for Deborah. She dropped an Ashton off at school. How are you feeling? A little sore from where they cut me, but uh, I'd do anything to get out of this joint. All right, let's go. Ah, no, can't. Hospital policy. I gotta wait for a wheelchair. Thanks for picking me up. Well, you know, left the meter running. <laughs> Come on, you know what I mean. We got history. I'll pull a cab around front. Okay. Mr. Washington? Hey, the front entrance is not this way. The waxing floors, we gotta go around. Thank <laughs> you. 